Let's talk aesthetic restocking and organizing videos because these babies have been taking off in popularity. When looking up aesthetic restocking on YouTube, you'll find hours of compilations, often labeled as restocking ASMR, where people buy massive quantities of products, usually stuff them neatly into an aesthetic container, and then keep them there so that their house can look like a new age convenience store. And with more of these videos being churned out every single day, I think it's worth us stepping back to consider why we are so fascinated by these videos and whether they're arguably just a glamorized version of hoarding. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how these videos subconsciously signal status and wealth. Let's talk about the tension between utility and aesthetics and what role our psychology plays into that. And let's talk about how our urges for rituals can be channeled into something that doesn't feed into a growing culture of excess. Also, throughout the video, I'm just going to do some reviews and reactions, so if you want to be directly de-influenced by me on some of these aesthetic restocking and organizing videos, stay tuned. By the way, if you are new here, I'm Kara and I make videos on the intersection of money, media, and intentional living. And as many of you know, I'm really interested in talking about how to become a more conscious consumer and the way that being a conscious consumer can impact not only our finances but also our planet. If you want to see more videos like this topic, be sure to check out videos like Let's Talk TikTok Made Me Buy It Culture and How FOMO Culture Keeps You Poor. And thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel. If you want to become a patron, the link is down below. And if not, no worries at all because we are diving in. So where exactly does this collective fascination with these videos come from? And I say collective with myself included because I 100% am fascinated by these videos and I find them oddly comforting to watch too. But why is that? I have a few theories. One, being evolutionary. At the end of the day, we're animals who are wired to survive. Our cavemen brains have no concept of Costco warehouses full of food that you don't have to hunt for miles or grow yourself. Our DNA can't internalize that no, most likely a pack of wolves will not be attacking tonight and eating all of my food. A spoiled rotund pet that's begging for my dinner? That's more likely, but not a pack of wolves. Evolutionarily, we're wired with a scarcity mindset in order to maximize our chances of survival. For our ancestors, that mindset kept them always seeking more, never satisfied with what they had because they're not guaranteed more. But many of us these days, especially those of us watching these aesthetic restocking videos, are not in such an unpredictable situation. We can literally sit on the couch and get everything we need brought straight to us, but our caveman brains don't know that. And so we continue seeking out resource acquisition, whether it's by buying lots of things for ourselves or scratching the itch of it by watching aesthetic restocking videos. Another theory that I think is layered on top of that is that of control theory. The Handbook of Behavior Change says that control theory, quote, proposes that behavior changes from moment to moment to keep perceived aspects of the self and world close to desired referenced values, a person's goals, standards, or ideals. Put more simply, we have this idea version of who we want to be, and then we change ourselves to try to be more like that version. But what does that have to do with aesthetic restocking videos? Well, a lot of media is aspirational. We're inspired by the media we consume, whether we're trying to mimic behavior or use it as a warning of what not to be like. When we watch these gorgeously shot videos that show shiny new product after product tucked away into drawers and bins, we can feel a sense of control and aspiration. It may make us feel like we're moving closer to that idealized version of ourself that is organized and always has more than enough. And that idealized version of ourself, even if brief, might alleviate an anxiety we have within. An anxiety caused by feeling out of control or like we don't always have what we need. So we are just gonna place all the way around on the edge and we're gonna work our way in. So you just keep stacking until you get to the top. And lastly, I think that something called the symbolic self-completion theory is at play. This is a theory that we've touched on in past videos before, from my video on aesthetic subcultures to my video on hall culture, both of which you can check out in my video essay playlist. But the foundation of this theory is that we seek out and use items as a way to reflect and validate our own identity. Identity is a weird thing. It's meaningful, it's fluid. It's this thing that we struggle to figure out for some portion of our lives. And I'd argue many 
of us struggle to figure out for all of our lives. Consumption is a huge part of identity formation. Consumption of media, of art, of travel, of education, and yes, even things like an army of scrub daddies. Honest question, how big of a mess are you making that you need that many scrub daddies? I kind of feel like at some point we're just watching a serial killer subtly show off their haul and we just don't know it. Anyways, consumption is a big part of identity formation, just like creation is. Creating of relationships, art, skills, experience. And while I do think that consumption is very valuable, I do not think that all consumption is created equally. It's like how not all sweets are created equally. Some sweets are better for your health than others. Like how blueberries are nature's candy, they are yummy, they are sweet, but they also have a lot of fiber to help you poop on the reg, versus something like Sour Patch Kids, which are delicious, but they've got no fiber in them, and you are not going poop on those anytime soon. I'd argue that things like aesthetic restocking videos, just like haul videos or other internet trend videos that are fun to watch but hardly memorable, are a junk food type of media consumption. And how that translates to our symbolic self-completion theory is that when we use videos or practices like these to understand ourselves better and signal status to others, we're relying on transient and superficial elements to define who we are, rather than building a deeper, more sustainable sense of self. And this isn't just about watching the videos, it's also about partaking in the habits that they promote. The idea of fully stocking every aspect of your life, buying tons of trendy containers that'll be swapped out with the seasons, and possibly letting products go to waste in the name of aesthetics isn't good for anyone in the long run. Because yes, it's nice to be that person with the aesthetic drawer full of extras for any occasion. And it's nice to watch junk media sometimes, we all do it. But what I'd argue is not good is when we start letting that inform too much of our identity, of the person that we see ourselves as. Now I wanna be super, super clear here. I do not think restocking is a bad thing. I don't even think aesthetic restocking is a bad thing. We need to restock things in our lives. We need certain items in our lives to survive. So restocking, kind of essential. I've said this in another video before, but we are not SpongeBob, so we can't filter feed. And it is not a bad thing for things to look neat and pretty when they're organized. If anything, it's actually a big pro to have these designated spaces so you can better keep track of things, make sure you don't buy duplicates that you don't need, and it just reduces mental load. All very, very good things. And I actually think that there is a subset or aspects of this restocking internet trend that have really sustainable goals in mind. Refillable growth grocery stores are something I would love to see more of in the world. And there are companies that are successfully scaling sustainable restocking of certain goods. One such example I actually get to talk to you guys more about today because it is today's sponsor, and that is the company Blueland. Blueland sells eco-friendly cleaning products from soaps to tablets for your dishwasher, your laundry, and your toilet, all of which are made with no harmful ingredients. They're vegan, they're hypoallergenic, and even better, Blueland uses no single-use plastic in any component, from bottles, tablets, and wrappers to shipping. Where traditional detergent pods are wrapped in plastic, Blueland tablet packaging is completely compostable. If you guys have seen my videos before, you will know how important sustainability is to me, and Blueland is a great way to make cleaning, something that we all have to do, far more eco-friendly. And yes, Blueland is incredibly effective and affordable. I've been using their laundry and dishwasher tablets lately, and so far, so very, very clean. But one of my favorite favorite things about Blueland is that you can actually refill the products without buying new containers every time, which therefore cuts down on the waste created. Whether it's bottles you can buy once and refill forever, or the steel tablet tins that can be refilled once you're out, Blueland offers an incredible way to make cleaning healthier, affordable, and more sustainable. You can get even more savings by ordering your refills in bulk or setting up a subscription, and the Blueland subscriptions are customizable so that you never run out of your most used products. If you'd like to try a more sustainable way of cleaning, you can get your first purchase from Blueland for 15% off by using my link blueland.com slash Nicole. That's blueland.com slash Nicole for 15% off your first order. I highly recommend checking them out and thank you so much to Blueland for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so the world of aesthetic restocking has a lot of good to it, from the sustainable aspirations of restocking to just the real usefulness of having a stocked space. 
but there's also this tension between utility and aesthetics. When thinking about these viral videos that showcase aesthetic restocking, it's worth thinking about whether practicality or appearances are taking priority. Take a grocery restock video. I'd say for the most part, grocery restocks are very practical. I don't know about you, but I need food to survive. And when I go to the grocery store and I buy food, when I come back and I fill it up in my fridge, that's restocking. Though, please don't look at my fridge because right now I have some Tupperware with mold growing, um, which is not aesthetic, but that's beside the point. Either way, it's practical. And yes, do some restocking videos have people taking the food out of a container just to put it into another container? 100%. Is that wasteful? Arguably yes, but honestly, I'm not that concerned about it. If people are using the containers regularly, and especially if it's helping them reduce food waste by making sure they know what they have and that it doesn't go bad, I think that's great because little known fact, I didn't know this for the longest time, but food waste is a huge environmental issue. According to the USDA, 30 to 40% percent of the food in the U.S. ends up becoming food waste, which is really bad for the environment for multiple reasons. Curbing your food waste is actually one of the best ways to lower your carbon emissions, but that's a story for another day. So with this in mind, I would say, sure, be mindful of the containers that you're buying and make sure not to buy too much food that you can't realistically get through it all and you're not going to waste it. But if you are using the containers and you're not just swapping it out every season and you're reducing food waste in the process, I say go for it. To me, that is a great example of utility and aesthetics coexisting with utility being the priority. But alas, not every aesthetic restocking video is like that. On the other end of the spectrum, we have aesthetic restocking videos that seem to prioritize aesthetics more than utility, sometimes even at the expense of utility. Take the trends around makeup and bathroom restocking. It's like watching miniature Sephoras in people's homes, countless lip glosses and foundations. To be fair, the beauty industry does prey on people's insecurities and beauty standards to sell products, and I totally understand having makeup and storing makeup. I personally have makeup and I store makeup and I use makeup just like a lot of other people, but what starts to feel ridiculous when watching these restocking videos is the quantity of products featured. Variety is totally okay, but products expire, and it's worth us considering how realistic it is that we'll actually use up the products we're buying and storing. Especially since we're living in a world of microtrends, where many of our purchases are influenced by fleeting viral moments, meaning that whatever beauty product we stocked up on today might not be what we want tomorrow. Also, just from a financial standpoint, aesthetic as it might be to have basically a mini makeup bar at your disposal, it'll also cost you a very pretty penny. Bathroom restocking is kind of weird to me too because how much bathroom stuff are people going through? I get toilet paper because we're all out here pooping, but guest bathroom restocking with six bottles of mouthwash, four Missler water, six deodorant. I don't know if I don't host people enough or when I do host people, they tend to bring their own products from home when they're traveling, but I genuinely cannot imagine getting through these products. Even if you gave me years and years, I don't think I would get through all of these products, but Maybe I just have too infrequent and too unhygienic of guests. Maybe that's it. On an even smaller scale, we have these mini aesthetic driven restockings for things like a Stanley Cup food holder. This is something I didn't get a chance to talk about in my Let's Talk Water Bottle Culture video, sadly. Some comments have called these food holders consumerism's final boss. And even though pouring your food into a floating bowl on top of your $40 water bottle can look kinda cool aesthetically, is it just me or are these wildly impractical, or at least kind of awkward to use. Like now you can't tip the bottle at all to get to you because that's gonna knock all your food over. And so you've got to do this weird robot bird motion over the cup and hope that you don't knock everything over. And maybe it's just because I'm a messy eater, but that sounds like a stain and crumb nightmare to me. Look, the thing with restocking is there's an implication to the word. You're restocking something. So there's this implied filling something back up to its natural former state. But it's worth all of us considering whether this is a half truth we're telling ourselves. Is there a justified utility to the restocking? AKA, are we restocking just just for the action of restocking? The topic that we've been skirting around this entire time is that of the culture of excess. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I often discuss, either directly or indirectly, this increased normalization of the culture of excess. Whether it's through slave labor subsidized gadgets on Timu, 
the ultra fast fashion of Shein or through trends like hauls, we're currently maintaining a tight relationship between shopping and entertainment. We internalize this mantra of if I want it and I can have it, why shouldn't I? And this bleeds into the constant aesthetic restocking videos we see nowadays. I'd argue aesthetic-driven restocking is a good symbol of our overconsumption problem, where the emphasis is less on necessity and more on the visual appeal and thrill of acquiring new things just to have them. I point this all out not to be a straight-up hater. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I think that these videos are really mesmerizing. I understand why people want to watch them and create them, and I don't think restocking is bad because we have to buy certain things, we need to restock certain things in our lives. So what I'm really picking on here is aesthetic-driven restocking. Because I think that the rise and normalization of this aesthetic-driven content, it subtly shifts our values towards constant consumption. It makes it feel like a given that we should always have our drawers packed full of beautifully packaged products, and it can subconsciously have us chasing more when our own drawers don't meet that expectation. Side note about drawers and all these pretty containers we've been seeing, I have this theory or this belief or this motto, whatever you want to call it, that the more storage that you have, the more you are going to want to fill it up. So if you have bookshelves, if you have bowls, if you have a dresser, you're going to see that. You're going to see that gaping hole and you're going to be like, wow, I need to put something in there. I need to fill it up with stuff. Even if you don't have stuff, when you're out and about, you're going to see something that looks cool and you're going to be like, well, you know what? I have space for that. Which is why I, I personally, I try to avoid buying those those kinds of things because I know myself if I just put a bowl on my kitchen counter I'm gonna want to start filling it up with stuff and I don't want that anyways if I had to play armchair psychologist for a second I would return to that idea of the control theory that we talked about earlier yes I think trends like this can be used as a way to signal status like ooh la la I can buy 20 different body scrubs at once but even more than that I think that we justify this excessive aesthetic driven buying by assigning it a narrative it's to be organized, it's for self-care, it's to prove to ourselves that we're responsible. And these narratives are a way for us to feel more in control. Because sure, we might have a toxic storm of a workplace or relationships, but you betcha we can control how many infused ices, individually wrapped face masks, and aesthetic glass jars of milk we have on hand. Speaking of which, I agree that the milk looks much prettier in the glass, but like, how are you supposed to know when it expires? Are we just relying on smell here? I think that people use these videos and these habits as a way to self-soothe. And I'm not here to tell anybody how to self-soothe, that is individual preference, but I do wanna offer up a supplemental or alternative way that we might be able to do that. And that is to establish rituals for yourself, more specifically rituals around health and finances. These rituals do not have to be complex or time consuming, just simple, consistent practices that help us find that sense of control and achievement that we're looking for. For health, it might be as straightforward as dedicating time each morning to stretch or meditate or take a midday walk every lunch. For finances, it could involve establishing a ritual of reviewing your budget once a week or setting aside money every month for savings and investments. I know these actions may not feel as exciting or entertaining as aesthetic restocking. They definitely don't have the same ASMR appeal, but what they might be better at addressing is that desire for stability and control. They may help us feel more peace and clarity while also helping us move toward a more healthy and financially secure future. By the way, it does not have to be one or the other. Aesthetic restocking or healthy rituals, I reject our incessant desire for this false dichotomy of everything. But if you are someone who loves the world of haul content and restocking videos and you just love doing that kind of stuff, it could be good to ask yourself why. Our current culture of excess needs to be examined by all of us, from the things we buy, to the quantity, to the media we consume, so that hopefully we can all become healthier, wealthier, and more sustainable versions of ourselves. But what do you think? Are you a fan of these aesthetic restocking videos? Do you feel like they subtly shift what's normal to us or not really? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And if you wanna see another video like this one, go check out my video on live shopping. I think you'll really like it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons on Patreons for supporting and for those on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate all of you guys so much and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for getting this far. I appreciate it. Bye.